So as we know right now, we, we what we've talked about over last week or so is chip shortages and the deal that we've heard that Xbox has kind of prioritized with AMD is that they get more chips and they a rumor was that they made a deal they spent more money in order to get more chips in order to make more consoles in order to push their their Series X and Series S into more stores which would increase sales. We know that Xbox is one March. We know that they won February pretty much. And I wouldn't be surprised if they win April and maybe even May, who knows in terms of overall sales. And one of the big reasons is just because uh, they have more stock, right? And if you have more stock, more people are going to buy your console unless like it's, it's an interesting thing to think about. Let's say last generation. Because I always use, people always love to use the only reason why the Xbox is selling is because there's more stock. And I disagree with that. I think they're the reason they're selling more. Yes, they have more stock, but two, because it's a great console that everybody wants and it's desirable. And whether if the stocks were even, people would still be buying the Series X and Series S just as much. It would still be like sold out everywhere. I truly do believe that. Because if you think about it, like let's say last generation, let's say the Xbox One right at launch, right? Because we know when they announced the Xbox One, there was a bunch of things that people didn't like and it really did hurt the sales of it. And um, yeah, although they went back on the stuff with the Xbox One, the, the damage was done. The public relations was done. The PS4 video of the game sharing, it was done. It was over. It was over before the generation started. And... Um, no matter how much work they did during the Xbox One generation, they couldn't make up for the debacle of the press conference when they announced all of the things that people did not like. So my my theory is, if the PS4 and the Xbox One were out, and there was a period where the PS4 just wasn't on the shelf, and the Xbox One was on the shelf, would people still be running out to buy Xbox Ones? instead of ps4s knowing all of the things that they didn't like about the console i some people would but i think it it wouldn't be as successful as it is right now with the series x and s even though it's hard to get a ps5 at this moment because there was a period of time earlier last year where it was much easier to get a ps5 i even saw it here in canada where like it was always links dropping for ps5 and there was it was really hard to get a P, uh, xbox series x i actually got like three ps5s for some friends who wanted it i just said hey if i see it i'll grab it for you and i was able to do that and i had other friends that wanted the series x and i just couldn't get it so yes stock plays a big role in sales but xbox has done a really good job this generation with the series and i've made a very desirable console with the features and the things that it can do and that's i would say the main reason why people are running out to buy it is that they've made a great console. So this con this article here is about the chip shortage and if it means that the Xbox Series X and S will get an upgrade this generation. We know that the One X and the PS4 Pro came out last generation. They say here, last generation was the first time we ever got a true upgrade within a console lifecycle. Sure, we always received slim consoles, here and small revisions there but the xbox one x marked a significant change in direction for console gaming and i think we will get a slim version uh, at some point of either one of these consoles we always get the slim versions going all the way back like super nintendo got like a revision like smaller like cooler version right so we've always gotten revisions of the console because they want to make them cheaper to produce and make more money off each, each unit they sell. The image in Xbox One X was massive upgrade on the base console, bringing incredibly high resolution targets and often the ability to switch between multiple graphics, most arguably both it and the PS4 Pro have had a huge impact on the new generation as multiple rendering modes are now the norm. So that was, yeah, that, that was huge because the One X, I remember playing, I think Assassin's Creed um, Origins. That was the first game I played on it in like 4k and it, it was a big upgrade from the xbox one now the reason i think the xbox one x and the ps4 pro came out was because when the ps4 launched and the xbox one launched they were both very anemic consoles they were further behind in that time than what we have right now with the series x and the ps5 specifically the series x i would say the series x is a very 
capable console in terms of power when you're comparing it to PC graphics cards, right? For when it came out. Whereas the One X was like very, it was just, I mean, the, the Xbox One was, it was, when it came out, it was already extremely far behind and it was just a very bad, it was an anemic console. And then even the PS4, but less so the PS4. On the Xbox side of things, the One X has seemingly had a big impact internally. Makes sense, yeah. This time around, Microsoft has built the idea of multiple consoles within a generation right into the naming convention. Xbox Series has always implied the way we see multiple console iterations this generation in Xbox Series S already proved that at launch. And we, all, we know that there is Project Keystone, right? Project Keystone is something that... that um, we've seen pop up. We don't know what it is. Is it another console? Is it a slim console? Is it a, a streaming stick? We don't know, but there probably is something else in, in the works from Xbox that we will eventually get. And I, I personally think it's like some, some something to do with streaming, but hey, we'll wait and see. However, the pandemic has had a huge impact on chip manufacturing, so much so that the new gen, gen consoles are still pretty hard to find. Barring the Xbox Series S, which is seemingly cheaper and easier to make. With that in mind, has chip storage harmed our chances of a new Xbox anytime soon, or will Microsoft merely change directions? So that's the question. That's what this article is asking. They go over some other stuff here with a couple of things that we've heard about, like the Keystone. We've also heard that there is a new chip that Xbox is going to be using, not changing the power performance, but just to reduce the costs and all that type of stuff. But will we get an upgrade this generation? And my opinion on this is that I do not believe we will get any upgrade this generation. I don't think so. I think the next console that comes out for Xbox will be the next generation console for a couple of reasons. One, the Series X launched. It's a great console. It's more than capable for a number of years. We have barely even tapped into the potential and the power of it. We have barely even tapped into the potential of the new, I guess you can say tools. I know people love to troll about the tools, but the tools like VRS and the 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 stuff that AMD announced, the two, VRS 2.0, all that type of stuff, right? That we haven't even gotten into yet. Games aren't even utilizing yet. And that alone is going to be able to, to increase longevity of these consoles. Three, we have cloud gaming. And we know with Xbox specifically, they're the fact they, they don't really care about the console. They don't only care about the console, I guess is the best way to put it. They want to get you into their ecosystem and they don't care how you play. You stream games or whatever, it doesn't matter. They're still keeping the Xbox One alive by allowing Xbox Cloud Gaming onto the Xbox One, right? So I do not believe we're going to be getting any upgrade this generation. The only thing I think we will be getting is some sort of slim variation of the Series X. I don't know how much slimmer they're going to be able to make the Series S because the Series S is a very tiny console. Like I have it right behind here. It's a it's a very nice, small little console that I don't know how much smaller they're going to be able to make it with the specs that are in there. We would have to see if they can. And a... We're two years, we're almost two years. We're going on to two years into this into this console. And I, I still think that we haven't even come close to seeing some of the stuff we can see. We have new engines like Unreal Engine 5, which we know is going to allow developers to do stuff that there was a, there was like the Superman, the Superman demo with the Matrix and the Matrix demo. And, and if we haven't even started to see that stuff yet, and we know that those types of games are coming over to the Series X, to the Series S. I don't believe we will see any sort of mid-generation upgrade. I think this, and I've I've had this opinion since the beginning of it, since they announced the Series X, they're gonna push this console for this entire generation. We may get another console generation after this, but they're going to be moving and shifting over, really focusing on their ecosystem in cloud gaming almost to a point where the console will potentially be the like secondary avenue for people to go and play games, whether it's next generation or the generation after that, that's kind of the way that the industry I think is going. But I mean, you never know. I mean, the one X completely turned around the Xbox one generation, completely turned it around. 
it was the beginning of where we are today with Phil Spencer and his vision and with with the Game Pass and everything. And and it was where you could see Xbox knew that they they had to kind of throw away the Xbox generation and kind of start from scratch. What do you guys think about this? In terms of making a reiteration, it'll probably be built around the idea of the shortage. Yeah, I guess who if they can get... Yeah, that makes sense. If they can find a cheaper and better way to be able to produce more of these at a faster and, and bigger rate, then they will probably create a console that is a bit different, but able to get out to the customer better. The Xbox Series is what the Xbox One should have been. Yeah, I mean, the Xbox One, you think about what they did when Don Master came out and he announced all of his stuff. Now, I don't think Xbox was like, ter- I don't think it, the Xbox One was a bad console. I don't think it was a terrible console. I just think Don Matrick was like way too far ahead for where the industry was at that time. And like, you look at the technologies that he wanted to push with that with like, even Snap. Remember Snap on the Xbox One? where you could just like talk to your connect and just like snap something on the side. That's actually a really cool feature. That I think a lot of people wanted back. And that was one of the things that they really showed off with the Xbox one, which is really cool, but it was kind of too far ahead for his time. And for like, it didn't work that well all the time, especially with the power of the Xbox one. Then you think about like voice control with the connect. A lot of people dislike that. Me personally, I didn't just, I, I didn't like it back in 2013 when it came out, but think about how, you control your life right now with like, okay, Google, whatever it's called, Alexa, all that stuff. What Xbox was trying to do back in 2013, everyone's doing now anyway. So I think they were just ahead of their time and which gave them, which made the console fail. And Xbox has always sort of been ahead of their time. You think about the OG Xbox one, they had the hard drive in it. PS2 didn't have a hard drive. It had like memory cards. The GameCube didn't have a hard drive. Again, they're pushing memory cards on you. The hard drive was great. Xbox Live, right? The PS2 and the GameCube's online services were garbage compared to Xbox Live. You look at 360, you look at like achievements, you look at your friends list, parties, all that type of stuff. They created all the stuff that we have in gaming now, but and they were always ahead and they're always first. And some of the things that they were ahead with stuck and were really good. And then the Xbox One was one of those things that they were trying to get ahead with. And it just, it just failed. New chips. Can we see more server blades for X cloud? Maybe, maybe they're still pumping Xbox into there. But from what I heard, from what I read was they're kind of, they finally transferred everything over to the series X uh, servers, uh, server blades from the one X or whatever it was before. It was like that there in the UK, got the PS5 day one, but had to pay a scalper price for a few months later for the Series X. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's in Canada. It was the exact same. When the consoles launched for the first year or so, it was way easier to get a PS5 than a Series X. And now it's like, or now it's like, yeah, it's, now it's reversed. Now in Canada, it's like, I can, it's easier. I see more Xbox Series X links pop up and I, it's harder to get a, harder to get a, um, a PS5, so. It looks like PS5 just kind of really went hard at the beginning to get as many people into their console as possible. Whereas Xbox is like, hey, we don't have to push as hard at the beginning because we have the ecosystem. We know people are still going to be playing on Xbox One and we know people are still going to be playing on the cloud. So as long as they're subscribed and they're still tapped into our ecosystem, we can kind of take our time and not worry too much about the chip shortage. And then we'll get back on pushing more, more hardware once... We get prioritized with the chips. I don't know. But it's it's a smart business strategy for sure. Hollywood doesn't like being held down by books and games. They always want to put their own spin on things. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> because, man, their spins sometimes are not very good. I don't, I'm not a big fan. I'm not going to lie. I used to use my Connect all the time. Yeah. A lot of people did. I think a lot of people who got the Xbox One at launch probably used the shit out of their Connect. And 
it connect isn't it connected to technology and like so many things now too. So connect isn't dead. It's just not, not an Xbox anymore. Right. Snap and upload studios were amazing features. Yeah, they were on Xbox one. I mean, those are great features back then. The DVR stuff now in the series X is pretty questionable. Um, there are a lot of things Xbox one did that were good. People just don't think about and they just throw out right away because the console just, I would say, essentially failed as a generation. But a lot of things that were very good, a lot of things that they were ahead of their time with that the customers just weren't ready for. That might be the way I see it. Even me, like when the Xbox One got came out and they, like I was a 360 gamer through and through. Like I love 360. I had all consoles, but 360 was my go-to. They announced Xbox One and I was one of those guys who was like, like screw that i'm getting a ps4 like after that announcement even after they changed everything i got a ps4 first and i didn't get an xbox one until like a year after it came out to play master chief collection so they even had lost me back then at the beginning for battlefield 4 the current system has a bunch of features meant to make graphics processing more efficient and it's not fully utilized yet. Once games start taking advantage of them, it will feel like an upgrade. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's why I don't think we will see a, a mid-gen upgrade like we saw with the Xbox One X with the power and all that type of stuff. We just haven't seen anything that these consoles can fully do yet with all the tech inside of them, all the RDNA 2 features. Unreal Engine 5, like games are going to look really, really good. So I don't see a reason for it. And then when you have an ecosystem with the cloud, it just doesn't make sense, especially with a chip shortage like they're mentioning here. Why? Why put yourself through that struggle and all that production and manufacturing when you can essentially provide all the stuff that that new console is most likely going to be able to provide with through different avenues? Thank you